This is question 13 from the 2008 non-calculator paper. Question A is asking us to write down the reciprocal of 4. So the reciprocal of 4 is simply 1 quarter. If you're, not, if, uh, you're asked to find the reciprocal of an integer, so an integer is a whole number, it is just 1 over that whole number, so 1 over 4. If, for example, however, you are asked to find the reciprocal of two thirds, what you would do is you would simply, to find the reciprocal, so if you were to find the reciprocal of two thirds, you would simply flip that fraction upside down. So it would be three over two. Or another way that you can think of four is you could think of four as being four over one. Four divided by one is four. So you could think of it like that, and you're still flipping the fraction upside down. Okay, part B. Part B asks you to work out the value of two and four fifths minus one and three quarters. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So whenever we see mixed numbers like this, the first thing I'd always suggest doing is turn them into top heavy fractions. Now what we're saying here is we've got two and four fifths. So we could ask ourselves this question, how many fifths are there in two? And then add it on to the four fifths that we got. Or we could um, the shortcut method is to take the denominator, multiply it by the number here, and then add on the 4. So it would be 5 multiplied by 2, which is 10, add on 4, that would give you 14. So you've got 14 fifths. And then do the same for the other one, 1 and 3 quarters. 4 times 1 is 4, add on the 3 is 7 quarters. Now we've got to this situation where we've got uh, top heavy fractions. What we now need to do is make sure that the numerators are the same. Uh, sorry, the denominators are the same. When we get this situation, when we're adding or subtracting fractions where the number on the bottom is different, we can't add or subtract yet. We need to make these numbers the same. The way that we do that is we find the lowest number that is in both the 4 times table and the 5 times table. So the lowest number that is in both the 5 times table and the 4 times table we can call our lowest common multiple. So the lowest number that is in the 5 times table and the 4 times table is 20. So that is the number that is going to go on the bottom of our fraction the whole way through. So we can put that in now if we want. Now the next question I need to ask myself is what did we multiply 5 by to reach 20? Well we multiplied 5 to reach 20, we multiplied it by 4 and whatever we do to our denominator we also have to do to our numerator as well. So 14 multiplied by 4 that's going to give us um, 56. Now I'm going to ask myself the same question of the second fraction, 7 quarters. What do I need to multiply 4 by to reach 20. So how did I get to 20 down here? I multiplied it by 5 and so whatever I do to the number on the bottom I'm also going to do to the number on the top as well. So I'm going to do 7 times 5 which gives me 35. So I've got 56 over 20 minus 35 over 20. Now all that I need to do is subtract the numerators. Remember the denominator stays the same when you're adding and subtracting fractions. 56 minus 35 that's going to give me 21 over 20. Now, I can just leave my answer like that. That will get me full marks in this situation. However, sometimes you are asked to write your answer um, as a mixed number. So in this case, we just to write this back as a mixed number, we ask ourselves the question, how many 20s fit into 21? 1 with a remainder of 1, and we were dividing by 20. So 21 over 20 is exactly the same as 1 and 1 20th. And that should kind of make sense if you think about it carefully. Okay, if you got that question incorrect or you made mistakes, what I, suge what I suggest you do is pause the video, attempt this question, and then press play for the answers. Okay, so answer to this one, we've got 2 and a quarter plus 1 and 1 third. First thing that I'm going to do is turn both of these mixed numbers into top heavy fractions. So I'm going to multiply this 4 here by the 2 and add on the 1. So that is 4 times 2 gives me 8. Add on the 1 gives me 9. 
So I can say that 2 and 1 quarter is exactly the same as 9 quarters. So I've got 9 quarters, then I've got 1 and 1 third. Again, take this number on the bottom here, multiply it by 1, add on the 1 on top, 3 times 1 is 3, add on 1 gives me 4 thirds. So I've got 9 quarters plus 4 thirds. What I now need to do is make sure that these two numbers here on the bottom are the same. The way that I do that is I find the lowest number that is in both the 3 times table and the 4 times table, which we can call a lowest common multiple. So the lowest number that is in both the 3 times table and the 4 times table is going to be 12. So that means that that 12 can go on the bottom of our fraction the whole way through. Because remember that when we're adding and subtracting fractions, the number on the bottom stays the same the whole way through. We don't, we don't add 12 and 12 and come up with 24 here. So it just stays the same the whole way through. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out what did I multiply 4 by to reach 12? I multiplied it by 3. So whatever I do to the number on the bottom, I also do to the number on the top as well. So 9 multiplied by 3, that's going to give me 27. Then let's look at this one. What have I multiplied 3 by to reach 12? I've multiplied it by 4. And then whatever I do to this number on the bottom, I also have to do to the number on top. So I'm going to times 4 by 4, that's going to give me 16. And so I've got 27 over 12 plus 16 over 12. What does this come to? And so this would come to um, 16 plus 27. That's going to give me an answer of 43 twelfths. So 43 over 12. If I was asked to turn it back into a mixed number at the end, then I would ask myself the question, how many twelves fit into 43? How many 12s fit into 43? And my answer there would be 3 with a remainder of 7. And I was dividing by 12. So 43 12s is exactly the same as 3 and 7 12s. And that would be your final answer.